Would you believe me if I told you that our entire reality is determined by tiny little particles and nobody knows who controls them or where they get the intelligence to do exactly what they do? Attosecond Physics is the latest innovation in the field of reality research. Using pulses of light that last a millionth of a second, researchers are uncovering the secrets of the subatomic world, and three researchers were awarded the 2023 Nobel Prize in Physics for precisely this. The Swedish Academy of Sciences in Stockholm decided that the work with extremely small time units, such as attoseconds, is of great importance for physics and for our understanding of the world, and that it deserved the Nobel Prize. Now, you're probably wondering what attosecond physics actually is, and quite rightly so, because this area of physics has not been well known until now. An attosecond is a billionth of a billionth of a second. This is such a tiny unit of time that we could never grasp it with our minds. But we can draw a comparison that makes this unit a little easier to understand. Within one second, as many attoseconds pass as seconds have passed since the universe was born. That's fascinating, isn't it? The realm of these attoseconds is also the realm of electrons. Electrons are fundamental subatomic particles that orbit the atomic nucleus with a negative electrical charge. Electrons act when atoms bond and form molecules. The behavior of electrons, therefore, also determines the properties of matter, which is based on atoms. Electrons and their behavior continue to determine many processes in nature, but also very practical things such as the electrical conductivity of things, magnetism, or the chemical reactivity of elements and their components. The Nobel Prize winners for attosecond physics are Pierre Agostini, Ferenc Krauss, and Anne Rillier. All three have independently developed special methods that enable the generation of light pulses in the attosecond range. This allows electrons to be practically tickled or stimulated so that they reveal certain behaviors. Although atoms, electrons, photons, and other particles are an integral part of our science, no one has actually seen any of them. Even atoms are far too tiny to be seen with even the best and most powerful microscopes. So we have to resort to tricks to be able to study the particles in the subatomic range. This is usually done by observing their effects in the visible world. Thanks to the ultra-short light pulses of attosecond physics, scientists can image the rapid movements of electrons in atoms and molecules, and this observation of electron dynamics provides deeper insights into fundamental processes of matter, and thus, our entire reality. We can see even better how chemical bonds are formed and broken again, or how photons interact with matter. These findings not only satisfy the curiosity of scientists, they can also help us to develop new materials or improve solar cells. Imagine we invent plastic that can turn itself back into its natural components, or solar cells that repair themselves and thus last longer. All this can be possible if we understand the world of the smallest particles and the processes that move them. Attosecond physics thus opens another window to the hidden mechanisms of nature and to a better understanding of how our world works. Quantum computers thanks to attoseconds? The three 2023 Nobel laureates in physics have each made significant contributions to attosecond physics in their own way. Anne Rillier focused on the generation of overtones by passing infrared laser light through a noble gas. This is a bit like in music, when sounds are scattered into different tones. The noble gas separated the light pulses, creating overtones that are close to attoseconds. Pierre Agostini succeeded in generating light pulses that lasted only 250 attoseconds. And Ferenc Krauss is another pioneer in working with extremely short light pulses. Today, scientists all over the world are conducting research with attoseconds and quantum physics, which also deals with the basis of our reality, is also benefiting from this science. The technology could even bring decisive advantages in the development of quantum computers. Thanks to attoseconds, for example, we could get to grips with the problems of cooling and the sensitivity of quantum computers. Until now, these supercomputers have only functioned when they are extremely still. Even the slightest vibration can distort the result of the calculation. If we understand the realms of electrons, we may be able to stabilize systems like these and also neutralize the problems with temperature. 
quantum physics and the nature of reality. It sounds crazy, but our whole reality is shaped by tiny particles that aren't actually real. Quanta have some fascinating yet confusing properties. They are in multiple places and times at the same time. They only form matter when they are observed, and they disappear when we don't observe them into a realm we don't yet know. This may sound a bit like our reality doesn't actually exist, but that is only partly true. This seems to be the case in the laws of the lowest subatomic physics. This macroscopic world is very unstable when we try to describe it or come close to it with our physical means. Nevertheless, this instability forms everything we see. One of the fundamental aspects of quantum physics is called wave-particle duality. Electrons and photons are also quantum particles and they can exhibit both wave and particle properties. This was first made visible by the famous double slit experiment in which a particle beam sent through two parallel slits transformed into a wave-like interference pattern. Only when the quanta were measured did a line emerge. This behavior contradicted our idea of particles as clearly defined objects that always have a certain position, shape, and speed. These fixed properties are only one variant of reality. The other is that of the wave, in which reality becomes a quantum of undefined possibilities and both seem to exist simultaneously. An interesting threshold within this subatomic world is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Up to this limit, we can just about detect and measure particles, after which they behave more and more unpredictably the closer we try to get to the bottom of them using previous methods. If scientists are after them, they practically evaporate that's crazy, isn't it? And you have to imagine it's happening everywhere at any moment. You are made of quanta, as is the table in front of you or even your computer. In effect, this means that your computer is going below the Heisenberg uncertainty limit to a spongy nothingness and possibly this threshold is even the entrance to a completely new physical dimension or to a previously unknown world. We do not know how the universe continues in the subatomic realm nor do we know how our universe continues in size and vastness. Quantum entanglement is another phenomenon that challenges our idea of reality. When two particles are entangled, the state of one particle immediately affects the state of the other, regardless of the distance between them. Einstein referred to this phenomenon as spooky action at a distance. And ultimately, it means nothing other than that quanta communicate with each other throughout the universe and carry and pass on similar information. Our matter is formed in the macrocosm from the building blocks that supernovae, or in other words, exploding stars, have hurled into the cosmos. The quanta in your body are certainly entangled with quanta that come from this very supernova and they exchange information. Let's take another look at superposition. This concept states that a quantum system can exist in multiple states simultaneously until a measurement is made. The most famous example of this is the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, where a cat in a box is considered to be alive and dead at the same time until the box is opened. Ultimately, however, this can also mean that many realities and dimensions exist side by side. For all these reasons, physics simply cannot yet answer the question of what reality actually is. It also seems that possibilities are much more real than a determined reality. If we see reality as what we experience every day or what happens to us, then it's a passing of events and time. These events are certainly real to a certain extent because we experience them every day. But perhaps this reality is not the only thing that exists. This would also mean that the results, truths, and knowledge of our scientists are nothing more than a variation of countless realities. We create reality. It may sound strange, but it's true. Science will probably never be able to fully describe the true nature of the universe and our reality, at least not with current means. This can be frustrating if we really want to have all questions answered immediately and completely. Science is a vast field with physicists, chemists, mathematicians, and many other scientists trying to get to the bottom of the nature of our world. In the process, we are constantly discovering and developing new things and making enormous progress as a species. Imagine that electromagnetism has always existed in nature. The ancient Greeks observed it and described it in various works. And unlike us, they were not able to capture these effects, imitate them, and use them for themselves. Otherwise, Socrates, 
would have been able to study and philosophize under the light of a light bulb. We first had to do more and more research and have things like plastics, coatings, glass, and many chemical components in order to make the forces of nature our own. Nevertheless, the findings of antiquity were the basis for this. By observing, studying, transforming, and using nature, we can see very clearly how we humans create, shape, and change reality. The massive changes on our planet, which consist of brightly lit cities, airports, skyscrapers, and much more, are realities created by us from the forces and raw materials of nature. All of this has only been possible thanks to science. And every year in Stockholm, scientists, academics, and eminent personalities come together to honor the best of the scientific disciplines by awarding the Nobel Prize. The Nobel Prize was established in 1901 by Alfred Nobel, the inventor of dynamite. Nobel decreed that his fortune should be used to endow prizes for all those people who have been of the greatest benefit to mankind. Today, Nobel Prizes are awarded in the categories of physics, chemistry, physiology, or medicine, literature, and peace. The most famous winners include Albert Einstein for his explanation of the photoelectric effect and Mary Curie for her research in radioactivity. Stephen Hawking received the prize for his work on black holes, and now the prize has been awarded to three people who make the world of attoseconds accessible and understandable to us. Subscribe to the channel now and look forward to many more exciting videos.